We want to say welcome to BibleStudyMinistry.com. Uh, today we're going to be studying Revelation chapter 9 and getting a little bit more understanding on what is being relayed to us. So why don't we get right into the subject for today. As we begin in verse 1, verse 1 reads, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So right there in verse 1, we learn that a star fell from heaven to the earth, and to him, so we can kind of gauge that this was an individual and not a literal star in the sky, um, to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And uh, so this star, we can, we're going to presume, we'll read it later uh, to get verification, but we're going to presume that this is Satan and the bottomless pit uh, is the militaries of the great beast, which Satan is ruling over at this time as these events are starting to take place, which we'll get a little better understanding as we continue to read at verse 2. Verse 2 reads, And he opened a bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So the bottomless pit was open and John reports that smoke uh, out of the pit filled the air, darkening the sun. So we always got access of what is this, you know, just off reading it, it doesn't really make sense. But if you continue to read the chapter, along with other understanding from the pages of the Bible, it's going to become very, very clear. We'll continue at verse 3, and it reads, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. So locusts came out of the smoke, and they had power like scorpions. So you got to, we want to keep this in, in, in context. John is receiving this vision. And he is describing to his scribe who is writing it out uh, what he's seeing. So it's, it's, it's one of those things that will become clear, but you have to understand the context of what is going on. He's in a vision and he's just writing out exactly what he's seeing, uh, probably describing things in his time period as if they were in as what he's seeing in our time period, which these events are going to take place. So reading at verse four, and then it says, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So these locusts that filled the air like smoke were told not to hurt anybody that had the seal of God in their forehead. So this why it becomes extremely important to understand the words of God so that you can un get this seal. What is this seal? Is it having the word of God in your mind, keeping the covenant, the commandments, having the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's the seal of God right there. So that's why it's important for us to be doing Bible study every opportunity we get. So getting back to verse four, the locusts were commanded not to hurt the grass of the earth or any gr anything green, but to afflict only the men who are not sealed by God in their foreheads. And the locusts are now, we're kind of seeing that these are military uh, subjects or military objects in war or war machines such as the fighter jets. And they are implementing a chemical warfare or germ warfare. This is very, um, this is going to get very serious because Chapter 9 here in Revelation is leading up to the events of the big war, which we're going to read. I, you know, I just like to jump ahead like a movie. I always tell what's going to happen next because, you know, undoubtedly, if you read the Bible, we know what's going to happen in this movie. So what we're actually doing is telling people how this story in and, and spoiling the movie for them. But let me control and keep my composure. We're going to continue reading at verse 5. Before we go to verse 5, I want to just show uh, fighter jets. And, you know, and just show some visual images of how they look. You see these in the air um, a lot, you know, 
if you go to air shows or if you're just walking through town, you'll see some of these fly by sometime. Uh, definitely if you live in a war zone and when there's a whole bunch of them, this is just some images of how they look. And sometimes they have these, um, these smoke coming from them, either from steam or they could be releasing things or just could be from shooting and, and the shooting of, of missiles and, 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 and machine round type uh, firing could cause smoke in the air. But I just want us to kind of get a visual image of these um, fighter jets. And see again the smoke in the air. And if we come right down, this is actual look of a locust. So let's go back and look at some of these jets. All right. And then you look at an actual locust. And this is a scorpion. So just wanted to give us a, a visual image of some of these things. Now we can continue reading at verse five. And to them, it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strike at a man. So these fire jets or these locusts that John calls it in the air, we're told not to kill anybody, but just to hurt them. The locusts were instructed not to kill, but to torture or torment. And this is this tormenting was to last or is to last for five months. So John describes this torment like when a man is stricken by a scorpion. And I have never had that happen to me. Uh, someone that may be listening under the sound of my voice may have been hit by a scorpion and they can definitely describe the pain or the feeling um, and understand that this is some uh, true suffering um, that is being put on these people verse 6 goes on to say and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them this has got to be immense pain. I got a very low pain threshold. Um, I get the flu and, and, I, and I tell God to cut the lights out for me. But, you know, this is going to be much serious than the flu. This is going to be definitely some chemical warfare that's going to torture people. And really what's happening is uh, torture into submission. This is what's really going on in this chapter where this one world government the, the the powers are going to try to force everybody in and those that do not come in we, we read in, in the previous chapter where they didn't permit people to buy or sell and I here they're going to hit them with something a little close to home which is their health and that's going to be a very grievous thing when uh, this torment or torture occurs uh, this those afflicted by this will want to die, but they will be unable to because it's not meant for them to die. It's just meant to really cripple them and force them into submission. And this is what's coming on the world in the Great Tribulation. A lot of people are dancing their way right into it without paying attention to what's really going on. Verse 7 says, And the shapes of the locusts were like men unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces or the faces of men. This is why we said that the locusts were fighter jets or military machinery is because John described them that way. He described them like they were horses prepared for battle. Things prepared for battle are, are definitely military machines. So I think that that will definitely help your understanding if you didn't understand that previously. Verse 8 says, And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. So these, these locusts were definitely going into a battle here. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And there, and there were stings in their tails. And their power was, and their power was to hurt men five months so this description uh, is one of a military machine 
and the chemical flying out of the stinger tail gave them power to hurt men for five months. So we know that this is definitely an onslaught. This is a war that's taking place. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. And um, if you look either one of those names up, you know it means destroyer. And of course, it's the angel that is of the bottomless pit, which was Satan, the devil, which we talked about earlier. And that's who it is that's running this, this um, new world government, one world government. The king over them uh, was the angel or the star of the bottomless pit. And this is Satan, the destroyer. That's a bad in, in Hebrew. Verse 12 says, one woe is past and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. And to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Now the sixth angel sounded and uh, was instructed to loose the four angels which were holding back all our war in the world. If you look at those four angels, they were held to keep these nations from going after each other's throats. But at this point, he was instructed to let them go. So here they go. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. A third part of mankind on the earth will be slayed on the sixth trumpet. This is a very big war. This is what people are calling World War Three or Armageddon or the 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 end of the world war. This is it and this is how it's getting started. It started with the the chemical warfare to force people into submission and that's when we saw the red horse or no, the white horse in Revelation, the earlier Revelation chapter one, he went out to conquer. He had to conquer through any means possible, mainly through food, clothing, and shelter. Then he moved to your health. And then that's when death came in. And this war is going to bring a lot of death, a lot of murder, killing, uh, not just through military war, but they might go and get some civilians. So it's very important to keep yourself in the place of safety for the Lord. And to certainly keep the seal, be sealed by God, not by the one pretending to be God, but by God. Continuing at verse 16, it reads, And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. So there were 200 million horsemen or 200 million soldiers in this army, and they were coming over that Euphrates River from the east. So this gives you... A, kind of a geographical plan on what's really going on. It's Eastern Europe, you know, what's coming over from the East Europe would be um, Eastern Europe and they're coming to the West to deal with them for that chemical warfare. Verse 17 reads, And thus I saw the horses in division, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone so this is military 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 this is war 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 fire issuing out of their mouth fire missile military guys that know the terminology those in the military know what these missiles and scud missiles and all these things that are weapons of war firing out you know what these things are and this is why it's important to learn about it Prior, so you are informed on what's going on around the world, especially at this time. If you remember in Joel chapter 3, verse 9, it says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, make, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. You know, so the Lord is telling everybody, especially the Gentile nations, because that's who's going to lead this war Eastern Europe versus Western Europe and they have a lot of allies in Eastern Europe Russia partnering with defense with China and all the little countries over there making a military that can form 200 million soldiers and they that's just one army going against Western Europe European Union or the European 
common market with all their allies and they're fighting against each other so that's why it says proclaim ye this among the Gentiles let the Gentiles know who are our Gentiles our European brothers and sisters and so this is where they are preparing for war this is why social programs are being diminished and military programs army weaponry are being strengthened verse 18 reads by these three was the third part of men killed by fire and by by the smoke and by the brimstone which issue out of their mouths if we have six or seven billion people on the earth and one-third of men we have two billion men and one third of them will be destroyed in this war. That is over 665 million men killed as a result of this battle or this war that's going to take place all over the earth. So we're we're going to lose a lot of uh, men, a lot of our brothers. We're going to lose them because of ignorance and because of um, straight up disobedience. So verse 19 says, and "For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents." and had heads and with them they do hurt and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of their works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts they will be dealt with also repenting is key however some people have done just you know too much evil uh, they do not have it in their hearts to repent they've done too much damage that it's just, you know, you ever done so bad that you just couldn't even apologize. You see some people that do that to people. They've hurt them, you know, raped, you know, uh, men have raped women, and they just couldn't bring themselves to apologize for it. People have murdered somebody, gone to jail, life sentence, and they still don't show any remorse for what they've done. And this is the type of people that we have on the earth that are going to be unable to apologize to God, unable to apologize to their fellow brothers and sisters, and therefore unable to get salvation. So that does it for Revelation chapter 9. If you have any questions regarding this Bible study uh, in Revelation chapter 9 or any other subjects, you know, feel, ple- feel free to contact us at BibleStudyMinistry.com forward slash contact. And while you're at our website, you'll be offered to sign up for our newsletter by simply entering your name and email address and these videos, audios, and updates will be sent to you um, directly free, of course. So we appreciate you studying with us today. Always a reminder for you to sign up for our newsletter and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel um, today where you have the chance and you'll be getting new YouTube videos of different Bible studies that we have and things that we feel will edify you and help you in understanding the Bible and what's coming up in the world better. This was Revelation chapter 9, Bible study with BibleStudyMinistry.com. God bless you and we'll see you next time.